Swing batter, swing batter, swing batter. I gotta get my, <clears throat> I gotta get myself in the in the right mind to talk about nerd stuff because you know this is not really my thing. I'm a, I'm a highbrow intellectual kind of guy, you know. <laughs> I, I like to sit back and read Shakespeare, um, and uh, um, that's that's the only like highbrow person I, I know. Shakespeare. Me doth not know with what you speak of though. <laughs> <laughs> hey everybody, this is Turk One Eighty Two and Wall Crawler One, and welcome back to another episode of In the Gutters. Uh, I had somebody at the other day ask me, and they were like, "Like, why Turk 182?" I'm like, what do you mean? And like, no, why? Like, it was like because I had to, had to come up with a name, you know. Like, so the name started off back when uh, Akomi and I were doing the Corova Game Bar, and he was already doing the video recording, of, you know, gameplay, and he had the name Akomi. Um, and uh, and then I was like, well, I guess I got to come up with the name too, and I was like, um. I'll be, Turk 182 and she was like why I'm like I just remember liking that movie like I watched it several times you know growing up and I just remember liking that movie and I was like it was pretty obscure like people would even um, be like Turk 182 what the hell is that right and so so that that's why and they're like oh okay I'm like yeah okay I had to come up with mine because when I guest starred on your show I had to come up with something the one that I wanted to use you said it was way too long <laughs> I had to come up with something else so I just wall crawler one well, and yeah, then that's that's our thing. Like, uh, if for if you're gonna appear on the show, you have to have like that's just our gimmick now. But you know, it's like you have to have a name. You know, um, even even if like someone like Jo Boyer is like, well, that's my that's my the name I use for like all my gaming stuff. You know, whatever. I, you know, it's like okay, fine. I mean, but it's still a name. You know, so yeah, you, know, you gotta have the name. Uh, so anyway, <clears throat> so yeah, so today on uh, in the gutters. I just kind of tossed this thing out there, and we talked about it on the one um, at the end of the one podcast. And if we actually air these in order of actual recording, then you know what I'm talking about. But I just had this idea of like, the, what would happen, or like, what would it be like if you had like a hero that was like time displaced and just placed in a war, like a, a random war? You know, just like, what would that kind of be like, either for the hero, for the war? Like, how would it change things? And um, you know, like if you said, okay, well, I'm going to take like, I don't know, like Wolverine and I'm going to like dump him back in like, you know, like the, uh, like the Phoenician war or something like that. I'm like, yeah, you know, okay. That could be interesting, but you know, it, it wouldn't be like, if you, you know, it wouldn't be like, you were like, oh, well he would like, you know, just kill everybody and tear things up or whatever. It, it wouldn't be that simple, you know? So um, so I was like, you know, kind of what would, what would that be like? So I was like, yeah, let's pick, you know, like make five different heroes and five different wars and just see like, you know, what would it, how would, how would that really affect things or what, what would it be like for, for them? So I was like, it's just kind of a, a just a strange topic. It was, it was hard for me because every time I thought of someone I was like, what if Captain America was in World War II? Oh, wait, what if Namor <laughs> was in World War II? Oh yeah. What if Punisher was in Vietnam? Oh, Wonder Woman. What if she was in World War Oh. Yeah. And it, it just kept going back to stuff that's already happened. So the only way I could get my mind wrapped around it was actually, like always, I had to come up with something that I could build a story around. So that's the only way I could make it work. So I, my wars are very obscure, with some of them. One of them is pretty mainstream, but the rest of them, like I, I stayed away from the big conflicts and focused on more minor ones. No, yeah. And yeah, that, that's the kind of same thing I had. I was like, because you know me being such a huge Wolverine fan. I was like, you know, what if, what if, you know, like Logan was in like Civil War? No, okay. Well, what if he was in the- <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, you're not a big Wolverine fan. You don't really like Wolverine that much. I'm the Wolverine fan. Uh, yeah. All right. So, uh, so give it to me, man. What you got? Well, I'm start. I, you don't want to start off as your idea. Nah. Uh, all right. This is the first one. It's kind of a cheat. It's two and one. I'm doing cloak and dagger. Wow, cloak and dagger. And so, well, because I mean, you have to have them both. You yeah. have to. You can't really do it. So I thought I was thinking more espionage, spy level, like not in the actual conflict. So, you know, Rommel, he was head of the Panzer Division. He did the African campaign in in North Africa, and like uh, he started out, you know, kind of like protecting Hitler and stuff. But like the, I kind of spread the story out where I kind of turned Tandy, uh, you know, Dagger into like a Polish girl. 
and she escapes the first, like when they invade Poland, right? So, so you're not doing a time displays. You're doing it as if they were like you're born then. Exactly. Kind of okay. put them in like that that aspect. So, like, I, I had to do it like a story. Or it didn't work for me. So basically, like, she escapes, and of course, she's about that level where she's kind of young anyway, right? And then she develops. They're they like 15, 16. Yeah. So by the time, so she escapes around that time because these powers develop, and she was a ballerina, you know, in Poland. And right. then, like, everything crushes because, you know, right. Hitler comes in with the forces and stuff, and Rommel was part of that. Mm-hmm. Well, so then, full circle, she finds herself over in Africa, and then Tyrone is not, not African. I mean, he's African-American, but he's from America, and he's fighting over there against them, you know? So they kind of join forces, and she's kind of undercover, gathering information, Given, given him stuff, cloak and dagger style, right. to to defeat the forces of North Africa, and then like it ends up, you know, the Tunisia where they um, defeat him and stuff. So, so how do they get the powers? Um, I was kind of thinking hers was more like a a mutant, uh, and then like uh, Tyrone, um, maybe like he runs into some stuff in Africa, mystical type stuff. Some something happens where he becomes cloak. Um, I haven't worked it out completely, but that's kind of where I went with it, you know. And I, I think, and, and at some point, they, of course, they use their powers and um, to to fight inside the city. And then, like, they and of course, they use each other. They need each other. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, I kind of like the whole idea. But they, but they they wouldn't be bound to each other like they like they are in like the regular comic book. Because, maybe because, after maybe after the conflict, you know, like maybe they end up together after the conflict and they continue on. Like they're a good team. They're cloak and dagger. It's almost like a. Mulder and Scully, you know, if they were like, you know, World War Two era, no, Captain Bucky, yeah, or Captain Bucky, which is kind of disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> but like, uh, that, that's kind of how I was playing it out in my head. I thought, I thought, it, I, literally using cloak and dagger as it's meant to be, cloak and dagger, um, um, you know, spy stuff, right? So the the one that really kind of just got me, this was just like a, a random thing that popped in my head, and that's what kind of started it off for me. And I kind of mentioned it to you earlier was. Um, like, what if, like, Spider-Man were in World War Two? So, you know, Peter Parker's is doing his thing, Spider-Man throughout the city, and, you know, he just, like, you know, blip, like I said, time displaced or whatever, and he finds himself in, like, the trenches of World War Two, mm. And it's like, like, none of his spider stuff will help. Like, obviously, he's got a spider sense, but his regular, like, spider powers aren't going to help him. Um, he's eventually going to run out of web fluid. Um, and he'll have to make some more, you know, if he can, somewhere, you know, because he, he doesn't where's have he going to build his lab, you know? Right, right. Like, so where's he going to get all the chemicals from to do all that stuff? So <laughs> he's going to eventually, like, run out of, run out of wet fluid. Um, if he's in, like, one of, like, the bombed out cities in, like, London or something like that, he's, he can't go, like, swinging through the city because, you know, with all the snipers and stuff like that, that's not a good idea. So, like, his powers would be, even though useful to some extent, <clears throat> like, he wouldn't really be able to use them fully. So... All he would, all he would be is like, like what, what would he really be able to do? Uh, he'd make it like maybe a really good runner, you know, like, so like we got to deliver a message over here, like nineteen seventeen style. It's like, okay, well, I can do that, but other than that, like what, like his powers. So is it the what, first world war or the second world war? Uh, for a second. So. Oh, okay, okay. But I'm like, but it's like, I'm like, you know, I just said nineteen seventeen style because like that whole the whole purpose of the movie, you know, yeah, yeah, of yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I could say Gallipoli, you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, but I'm like his powers are completely useless in a sense there. And he just almost becomes like another soldier. I mean, the only thing he's got really going for him is his agility. He does have that slightly accelerated healing, you know, not to the point of Wolverine, but it has the slightly accelerated healing. And then he's got his, um, Spidey sense, his Spidey sense. But the thing that you've never seen Spider-Man, um, deal with before is when he's fighting like Sinister Six, it's one thing, but if you're in a conflict like, like that, where you've got bullets flying everywhere and people shooting and mortars going off, like your spider sense would just be overloaded. Well, because like, because because like the, that's post traumatic stress. Like, how do you ever heighten down from like constant any second could be death? And actually, you know what's funny? You you could just kind of play, and of course, you don't really want to do this, but then like Eddie Brock, and like <laughs> he's on the other side, he's doing stuff, and you can't sense him. He's like your ultimate danger. Oh okay, Brock. That- that would be horrible if Brock was on the other side because because yeah. if, if he was shooting at him, he wouldn't know. Yeah, like he would not know that 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 bullet was coming. That would be that would be kind of a cool twist. But so the you know, the other thing about that is like um when um uh with uh 
with Spider-Man's um as his uh, spider sense, it doesn't tell you what danger is coming. It doesn't tell you what to do. It just says there's danger. And then he, you know, it, they've never fully explained exactly how it says, like, like what move to take. It's just like there's danger. And then he kind of gets out of the way. So if you had the thing going off, they're telling you there's danger. It's like, no, no, say danger to the right, danger to the left. No, no, get down. No, no, no. You can't go that way. Like, you would just be like, well, you know, like I, a, I give up. Yeah. Well, you know, Spider, when you reach down and kill one, you know. It, it, it seems to know that something's coming towards it. Like, you know, and actually, I did that more when I was younger. Like, nowadays, for the most part, unless it's a Black Widow, I, I pick them up and I put them outside. But, like, it seems to know that something's coming after it, but it doesn't always make the moves to actually get away. Yeah. So it doesn't always work, you know. It's like, it, it helps, but it doesn't really stop you from your... I mean, I mean, a, a giant is going to pick you up. Yeah. <laughs> you can't get it so far. So kind of, kind of off topic here, but um, like, this is... And when I say scariest, it's not scary, scary, but when you kind of think of it, like it, it's it's a little bit frightening. Um, and I'm trying to think what it was. It, it may have been a spider, but I don't think it was a spider. Um, it was um, it was something like some kind of bug. It was in my house, and I like killed it. Like I stepped on it, and yeah. I killed it, and then I you know you know got like a piece of shit or whatever, and I picked it up and I threw it in the trash. And the trash can was empty at the time, so I threw it in the trash can, um, and uh, and that was it. And then I, you know, like, you know, I went about doing my stuff and I think I went to bed and the next day I woke up and, uh, there was nothing in the, there was no, no bug in the trash can. Oh. And I was like, he's after you now. Yeah. I was like, oh <laughs> shit. I was like, now I need to survive that, <laughs> but he's probably got a grudge. <laughs> the, 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 that, that, that was like, uh, that was like kids in the hall. Did you ever see that where like, they killed the spiders? Like, and the spider was crawling like, revenge. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But I was, I was like, I was like, that's frightening because, like, you know, I wasn't expecting him not to be there. And then when he wasn't, I was like, oh. Have, have you ever grabbed something with a Kleenex and you thought you had it, and then it's not in the Kleenex anymore? And you're like, ah, oh, where did it go? <laughs> or then you try to drop it down and it's not in there anymore. You're like, what? It's scary, man. You're like, ah. Oh. Or it actually gets on your hand. You're like, ah. I was, uh, I was brushing my teeth like uh, it was like a week or so. Well, I mean, I brush my teeth every day, but you know, this particular incident was like a week or so ago. I was brushing my teeth, and and it was like an ant, like it was a soul ant, like crawling on the sink. And so, like, I just you know, took my, my cup of water and I like, washed him down, and he went down. The thing. So, and, and I turned on water, you know, make sure he went down there. So then I'm, so I'm continuing brushing my teeth, and I look, and the ant comes crawling up out uh, of the sink, and I'm like, and I was like, oh, I was like. Okay, well, I mean, shit, you're you're pretty tough. I guess I should let you live. I'm like, no, wait, no, you're too tough. I'm <laughs> sorry, <laughs> you you gotta go. <laughs> you're you're the super powered ant creature. Yeah, like you're too evolved. You're gonna take us all over one day. Yeah, I was like, at first, I was, I was like, I was like, you earned this, man. Like you earned your freedom. Then I was like, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Like being being tough like that, just just <laughs> you just yeah, you know, just like you know, just create you you create your own death sentence. Uh, all right, so uh, so what's your next one there? This one actually works out pretty good, man. I think like uh, because it feels very nineties, and all this kind of happens at the same time as I, I do Thunderbolts again, but like uh, I put them in Kuwait. And, so like, you're, doing the invasion... a, you're doing an entire team, not just one person. Yeah, sorry, I, not, I can't just do one. I would have to do just one. I well, my, kinda... but the idea was like a, t- a time displaced person where they just kind of find themselves there. I guess I, I mean... guess when I started developing, like, I, I guess I just thought I was did good to actually put somebody somewhere because like, I kind of like the team idea. Um, I, well, go, ahead, go ahead, go ahead with your Thunderbolts. So, team. Sorry. Sorry. It's not a bunch of them. It's just three of them. Okay. And like, basically like I did the so Thunderbolt. It, it's, it, um, it was basically like the, um, invasion of Kuwait, you know, like, um, um, the, the desert storm thing. And it kind of, you know, storm and Norman Thunderbolts. Oh, okay. You see, that's kind of built off that. And then like, he's on the team, Rhino, Jersey and like Schwartz calls from Jersey and he calls him Jersey and then like but who else Speed Demon and then like you know Wizard and they keep making fun of him calling him Wizard and stuff <laughs> and then and then Beetle and like basically what they do is before it, it was a pretty decisive victory it wasn't like it was like a super long conflict where they had to take him over but like it, just kind of like they they needed to serve their country so they used him and they put him over there and I kind of pictured them all kind of like uh you know desert type colors you know. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, like a muddied up version of Rhino. And then, like, uh, you have Speed Demon. He could create the Cyclones, you know, the Sandstorm. Like, I mean, it's it a pretty good force to, like, build their base operations where they could take stuff out. And then they could 
you know, bomb them or whatever. So basically, like, he just uses them to, to prepare all the other stuff, and then they can work time off of their sentence and stuff. And then, like, uh, so, almost like a, almost like a, uh, like a, uh, soldier version of Suicide Squad. Yeah. And, like, it just kind of like they, you, you're, we're using you to, to develop this. And then, like, uh, so it's not too many guys. And, like, you know, I, I picture Beetle and, like, kind of like brown, brownish, you know, like the missiles and stuff. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, I mean, like, just kind of like a little small infantry team to, infantry team to just to, to build up the, to help the troops to get in there to take them, take out the, and like like I said, it's nineties, you know. It's like a little side mission on the Thunderbolts. I mean, yeah. You know, I I could see that being like a like a little story would be kind of funny because what I just imagine is like you know Rhino's a pretty tough guy, you know, and he's not like Juggernaut, you know, where he starts when he starts moving, you can't stop him. Yeah. But like him trying to run in the in desert sand. Yeah. Like you know that it, that wouldn't work. Like you know, Speed Demon could do it. Um, he could definitely he could definitely take down some buildings though you know yeah yeah like, so if, so if there was like like a solid road or whatever not a problem but if he's like trying to like run across desert sand or whatever because his feet are just gonna be sinking into that and he can't get any traction well it's kind of it's kind of like point team you know yeah. you put them out first and then the the guys come in after him you know it's like little assists so yeah I guess I did cheat a little bit on that I didn't think about it I just, it just you know just an idea pops in your head to keep going with it because like and just like you know wizard. Stop calling me that. <laughs> <laughs> I always like Speed Demon. Um, I think I the Squadron really, Sinister. You know, it's like I think I had the first appearance of him. Um, was it like a? It was an Peter Avenger. Parker? I thought I thought it was like they start off with the Avengers. I thought that's where they. No, no, that's the that's the well, that's he's Wizard, and then he Speed Demon is the the like in um it is uh spider-man it's because right. it's got the cyclone cover yeah 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 yeah. where he's like spider-man's kind of like caught up in the remember that guy because because like he's wizard like because like in squadron sinister it was like grandmaster and kang were fighting each other grandmaster created the squadron sinister to go up it was hyperion um prism and hyperion and Wizard against the Avengers, and that was Kang's team. Yeah. Mm. So, and then then Wizard became because you know Wizard's a terrible name. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 no worse than Power Princess. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, wow. It's like first off, you want to be called Princess, uh, but then <laughs> <laughs> but then you know you also would be like, but I'm tough too. I'm tough, Princess. Uh, that that's that's funny. I was say, do you remember this, the Spider-Man character Slide? He was in like the issue of like Amazing Spider-Man. He had that like silvery suit on and like the like the green goggles. But basically, he was just like he just had this frictionless suit on. Yeah, I kind of remember him. Yeah, and I, I think he was like in like one issue. Yeah. yeah, I think they've used him since then. But yeah, he's real obscure. You know, what they really need to bring back. Um, was it the uh, the the Rocket guy, the the black guy with the afro that had like the rocket shoes, and uh, they need they like. Like Spider Man trying to help him, and and then he ended up like uh, then he fight the guy. Is it Rocket <laughs> Racer? I think so. Yeah, like he has the red outfit. Yeah, 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 yeah. They they've used him since then too. He's obscure too. Didn't didn't they fight a guy that was like a giant Ferris wheel or something? I, I, something <laughs> something weird like that. It was really bad. Spider Man's got some really bad villains. <laughs> oh man. Uh, so so for mine, like I was. It's one thing to take out like a hero and put him back. Like I said, I I think it'd be kind of cool to take Wolverine and put him like way way back, you know, in in something where, in he really is like this kind of like. He, even though he's he's got his skills, um, I, I it's not really a war, but I think it'd be interesting to take like Wolverine, and put him back in like like ancient Greece in like a gladiator games kind of thing. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. I, it's, again, it's not not really a war, but if you you could then you could start off where he was a part of like you know one of those uh, one of yeah. those battles you know Greek battles, Nebulous. and then you know as like the you know because I mean you would think that Wolf Wolverine's on your team you're gonna win, but yeah Wolverine's gonna win. I don't know about the rest of you guys, but Wolverine's gonna win. So so <laughs> does he actually use his claws? Can he use his claws? But yeah, so so if yeah. I if we if I do like a time displays things, yeah, he's gonna have his, his his metal claws and bones and stuff. But I was gonna say, um, you know, if it, if it take him and you just uh, like you have fifty men and well forty nine men and Wolverine, right? Wolverine's gonna be okay, but when those forty nine guys die, you're still outnumbered like 
you know, one to how many people. So, you know, he get captured. He's a great, um, he's a, a, a great fighter. So why not play him in a gladiator game? And, and I could see, I could see Logan like quickly adapting to that. Like what else do I have here? Like, I can't really fight for anything in this, you know, in, in this, uh, I was gonna say world, but in this, the, the this age. So why not just revel in this? And I, I, I can make myself a, a champion, a king, have whatever I want here. I'm not going to die anytime soon. Like, cause re- really you don't have anything that can kill me in this period. And then once your kingdom falls, you know, which it is, I'll move on to something else. And, you know, I, I, I that would be kind of, so it wouldn't, it, you, you could start off as the war and then it would just, gra- it was gradually change into this thing right here. But then you would have to see like, what does he do after that? And you have like a completely different kind of like take on Wolverine where like now we have conflicts all the time. But you put him back there, you don't have conflicts all the time. There's nothing big. And he could even become like as his own um like kind of like a like emperor. You know, ruling, you know, something. I don't know. I think that'd be interesting. No, no, I, I, I like that. This one this one I didn't cheat, I guess. I, I I did just do one character, but I was thinking Silver Samurai. And like uh I kind of put him in feudal Japan, mm-hmm. and like basically, like uh, you could maybe start off like where he's maybe it's like a rite of patches passage thing where he's got to go back in his ancestors' shoes because you know Kublai Khan he was trying to take over Japan and like there was there's like twice that he tried to go over there and like the the basically like the shogun were in charge at that time mm-hmm. and like they they rebelled the, they basically repelled the the Mongols uh, uh, attack um, and. And anyway, basically, like they couldn't pay the samurai, so then they tried to rebel. Uh, they they basically teamed up with the, the emperor to get the the shoguns out of control. Um, and 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 like uh, basically, like the the silver samurai was part of that. Like he was at first he was fighting the Kubakan, and then and then he basically takes back Japan. And then when he comes back full circle, he's ready to do whatever mission he's got to do. You know, yeah. in the present, you know. Kind of that type of deal. I, like I said, I was just trying to make a story, you know. Yeah, that'd be cool. So maybe not so much that he was. It's it's him, but he's kind of like embodied in, in one of his ancestors' shoes. You see. Yeah. And like, so he kind of technically did do the things that made him him later on. Yeah. To be worthy of whatever challenge is coming up next. Like Fry becoming his own grandfather. Exactly. Hmm. Uh, that'd be cool. I could see that. Um. Shit, I just uh, oh, um, so mine is kind of like it's kind of different, and <clears throat> it's because of the characters. It's actually more of like a, I guess a, a humorous take on this whole thing. But mine is Booster Gold during the uh, the American Revolution. Hmm. So I can see him like aristocrat, like you know, ooh, like like having his baby, like he's like he's wearing the knickers and stuff. <laughs> like that. So so the thing is, when Booster Gold, you know, so everybody, if you know the story of Booster Gold, he was a janitor. And like the superhero museum in the future, and he always wanted to be a superhero. So he he says, you know what? Screw it! I'm going to become a superhero. So he stole a bunch of different things, like a Legion flight ring and this suit, and then took uh, this robot. Um, and uh, I forget where what Skeets. If he he was part of the future, but I don't remember if he was like an artifact on display. But but anyway, he took all this stuff, put it together, and called himself Booster Gold, and went back in time. He's he's kind of Skeets hero. is kind of like a. He he, kind of like what do you call it? Like a walking library. Like he, yeah. he he knew all the information about everything. But I remember if he was like if he was like his just a a, a product of the future. Or if he was like another artifact in the museum, I forget. I can't remember either. But anyway, so um so you um you um that he goes back. But so when he goes to go back in time to become a hero, like going back to the nineteen eighties, um he accidentally goes back to the uh, the American Revolution. And so there, he he's trapped there, and you know, and trying to. But he didn't have the suit and everything, right? Well, like, yeah, he did. He's got he's the got, suit. he's got the suit and the American but, but, Revolution. <laughs> but the, the, here's the here's the part that's funny. So you know, being Booster Gold, like, he his suit's going to get damaged, he needs to be repaired, but nobody can repair it. Yeah, he finds like a basically a distant like a distant relative of, of his Ted Cord. Oh, Cord, okay. right? So who was like a tinkerer of sorts, and you know. 
using parts of Skeets, he's able to, because he can't understand any of this stuff at all, but tries to repair it and doing what he can with like, oh, we just discovered like, you know, like cogs, you can like make stuff work this way and a little bit of electricity or, you know, that kind of thing. And so he ends up kind of like getting this like almost like a steampunkish kind of like thing to once his suit breaks down. So you still have like the, like the blue and gold thing, like the blue beetle and booster gold, but it's like a, do they do they battle the evil Lord Maxwell? <laughs> <laughs> That'd so, be kind of funny. So you still have all that stuff, but in the like it, like this is the uh, the American Revolution and uh, they, you know fighting the British and all that stuff. So I just thought that'd be kind of funny, like him completely out of time. And of course, the whole time he's gonna be bitching because he's in the wrong time period, and and he and now he has no way of getting out of there and getting to the right time. But then he does end up meeting like us at a they uh a relative of Ted Quartz, so you still get that that uh, booster gold and uh, and blue beetle banter and stuff. So I yeah, think it'd be kind of funny. Yeah, they're they're, they're really like uh, peanut butter and chocolate. You know, it's like they really go well together. Yeah, <laughs> like they you're just one without the other is just all right. Cool. I'm like I'm like a big Braveheart fan, and I know it's not necessarily historically accurate and everything, but like um, I I one of the things that I always found interesting is like after. Braveheart, like Robert the Bruce sent his brother to attack Ireland, which was he he was looking at it as it's kind of like war is um who's the good guy you know mm-hmm. it's like so from their viewpoint they're fighting for their freedom by attacking Ireland but you're doing basically what England did to you, you right know? It's, 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 yeah so are you the good guy at that point so so basically what I was thinking was like when Robert the Bruce sends his brother to attack Ireland Sean Casty. So he's in one of the wars, right? And then he, he's just a regular Sean Cassie. He dies. But Banshee, the origin of Banshee, is the screaming, wailing women or, or, or souls that are left over for their wounded Siren, his daughter. So she finds her father on the battlefield and she becomes Siren. And then, like, later on, they end up feeding, uh, fighting off the Scottish invaders. And she's part of the, you know, like, one of the, ba- she had the Banshee powers and was helped part of that. You know? now, now, does she have to, like, move on herself or are they going to let her join? Um, I think it's more like she's not necessarily on the battlefield per se, but she can sneak in and kind of come in like at the nighttime, like, ah, you know, and scare the <laughs> shit out <laughs> like, <laughs> like, you know, more like psychological type horror stuff. Yeah, I'm not, not, I'm not going to have her shave her head and become Joan of Arc or anything. Like, uh, I, I, I kind of like the whole idea of getting in his head and he's seeing stuff and he's like, shit, is that for real? It's like, these guys are freaking me out. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's kind of what I came up with. Okay. That's interesting. Um, so, uh, so I, I was, you know, I'm not a big like history person. So, um, you know, we were talking earlier about like the, uh, the, uh, Tsar Nicholas and that kind of stuff. And, and, you know, the Romanovs, the, the Romanovs yeah, and the, you know, the Bolsheviks and, and all that stuff. But, you know, and then I, I know like, you know, the wars, but like, I couldn't tell you, like, if I go all the way back to like Charlemagne and shit like that, I can't tell you like any of those wars, but, um, and, uh, but I was thinking, sure, um, sure. well, and I'll, nobody cares, but like we did the ancestry thing and like I'm adopted by the way, so I'm not technically blood related to this, but like supposedly mm-hmm. part of our ancestry is t- attached to him somehow. We did, it didn't really benefit us in jack shit way, but it's like supposedly, I don't, I don't attached know. Attached to who? Charlemagne. Oh, Charlemagne? Yeah, really? yeah, yeah. Oh. Uh, I, the only thing I remember of Charlemagne, I don't even know why I even remember this, is, um, in I guess it was seventh grade, the one teacher I had, and she was teaching us about it, and she was like, because I was, was in the South, she had a Southern accent, and she was like, Charlemagne forever. And I, <laughs> and I don't know why that well, is. Well, everybody funny. always like, because like he, he he transferred power over to Christianity. He, like he basically like be okay to be Christian, but he pretty much did it on his deathbed. He was never a Christian his whole entire mm-hmm. life. He's pretty much a monster. <laughs> <laughs> like he's just like, Oh, he saved the Christians. Yeah, he was deathbed because he's trying to save his ass for all the bad shit he did. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what Bart Simpson plans on doing. <laughs> and it works. I mean, it's supposedly it's true. If you're really sorry, then it works. Well, I mean, yeah, when I'm dying, I really am sorry. <laughs> it's like, I'm like, shit, I should have done all that crap. Uh, uh, but, um, anyway, so, I, I you know, so, like, when it comes to wars, I, like, I can't really think of, like, a lot of, like, ones in or maybe i can't think of like the name like because i was talking about like you know hannibal crossing the alps and stuff yeah and I'm like, i don't but um hulk punching out an elephant that'd be sweet <laughs> yeah, that would be funny <laughs> so i was thinking though like uh 
like when the Mon- when the Mongols were invading China, of course they built the Great Wall of China. But the Great yeah. Wall of China took a long time to be built. I mean, yeah, I mean yeah. if you've ever seen that, like it, that's a big ass wall. I've never been over there, but I've seen pictures of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he, I mean, <laughs> that's just because you say how like powerful the Mongols were, man. They were a force to be. Ra- I mean, like literally, like they say that, like talking about ancestry, pretty much almost. It's like a high percentage of people on this earth right now can own their lineage to, like, uh, um, not Kuba, Kuba Khan's the son, um, Genghis, uh, Genghis Khan, yeah. because he, he just fucked everything. <laughs> he he raped everybody. I mean, like his bloodline's just everywhere over in Europe. So I, I saw this Reddit headline um, the other day. Uh, I didn't like go and read the article, but it, I was like one of those like today I learned kind of things, and it was like uh, I think it was Genghis Khan. He said that he would like. Uh, marry his daughters off to like um like if there's a country he would like marry his daughter off to like the the head of that country's like um son um and then he would uh send the son-in-law to fight in one of like the battles and then the daughter would then be in charge of the country yeah and then it was like so he was in control no matter what right and like and that's smart like that the guy knew what he was doing like i mean but he never got china but his son Kubikon was actually technically more proficient than him because he he did he, he had China for a while. Nobody's done that but him. But it didn't last forever. But it's like but then he spread too thin and like tried to go to Japan. But anyway, it is what it is. Like it's it's uh, Genghis was just a monster man. He was like pe- people were just ba- basically paying him. Was like please don't hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> so I was thinking like so you take that you know when the Mongols are you know like invading or attacking China. And then you take, and then the hero that you put there, time displaced hero, is Mister Furious from Mystery Men. From Mystery Men? Are you freaking kidding <laughs> me, man? Right. I was like, I was like, I was like, are you serious, man? You're going there? Holy crap, man! <laughs> Mister Furious, the guy whose only power is to get mad, and like, <laughs> that's it. What? I was like, Mystery Men. <laughs> I like, I like I like that pause. You're like, wait, what? I I just had to I just like had to read, I had to think about what the hell you're talking about. I was like, wait a minute, Bob Burton? How the hell did Flame and Carrot get into this shit? So so now it actually and this is really kind of like bizarre because I I thought it'd just be something really weird to do. Blue Devil. In 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 um, Mongol times, yeah. Like like I guess that'd be kind of creepy. They'd be scared shitless of it. They him, would man. be. <laughs> But 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 he'd be trying to help him out. But yeah, and then you know, like if you know the story of Blue Devil, um, which I, I haven't watched the Swamp Thing uh, TV series yet, so I don't know how much they get into this. But Blue Devil was an actor who ended up getting the suit on or having it, whatever. But it fused with his right, body. It fused with his body, and he can't take it off, so he looks like a devil. And then he's got the powers that come with it. But I like the comic. I thought it was good. The comic was was cool. So yeah, <clears throat> Blue Devil. So you got this guy there that's now there, and he's a mystic hero kind of sorcerer thing but he really was just an actor that ended up being in this situation and now he's there in the past and of course people are looking at him and they're like you know you got this like walking blue devil there which and you know that they're like scared of they're probably trying to kill and hunt and he's like but i want to help you guys to stop them and he's like we don't want your help <laughs> it's like get the hell away from us <laughs> no that'd be funny man i like it so I, chips. It, 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 sorry, chips is on TV. <laughs> um, see, uh, you know the band um, uh, Seven Mary Three from the nineties. I have become cumbersome yeah. to this world. So their name comes from uh, the TV series Chips. That was their call number. Oh, Seven, Seven Mary Three. Mary Three. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. Uh, too white or too too black? Too white. <laughs> <laughs> Cumbersome. Too rich or too poor. She's one of me less and I'm more than the more. The, the, there's a, Isn't that just every relationship with a woman? It's like she wants you less and you want her more. Yeah. <laughs> the, the um, the, There's a... They did a song on the second Crow soundtrack. It's pretty good. Really? Yeah. What's that song? I can't remember the name of it, but it's like it, it was, it's actually pretty good. Because... Uh, the first Crow soundtrack is is awesome. I don't love every song on there, but I love like seventy five percent of it. The second one um, has some really good songs on it. Like it's got the whole cover of Gold Dust Woman. We, we talked about this in our one soundtrack thing. It's got the Rob Zombie song. It's got some good songs on it, but I don't remember that one. Yeah, it's it's you know it's been a while since I heard, it, but like uh, 
that was the only other song besides Cumbersome that I ever heard him do. And uh, I listen to it fairly often, but of course I can't remember what it's called now. So, Well, yeah, your life has become cumbersome. Cumbersome. <clears throat> you can only remember so much stuff at a certain time. You better than me, but... I try. There's the episode of American Dad where Klaus and Stan are just remembering 90s bands. And um, it's kind of funny. Uh, uh, they, 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 I'm watching them. I'm there. Like, they start naming all these bands. It's like, oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, it was a good band, too. It's like, yeah, I like that band. It's like, <laughs> what happened yeah. to them? <laughs> it's true, man. Like, what did happen to so many of them? Like, they were there and they were big. And then, you know, my, um, my wife, like, uh, I don't think there's been a day alive that I've known her that she hasn't mentioned salt and pepper in some way, at least every day I've known her. <laughs> really? <laughs> just, just cause like, she, she's just like, uh, she just thinks it's, she, she's always like, uh, that, the, that music from like, God, what a man, what a man, you know, stuff like yeah. that. She's just, just kidding. So she'll always say something about that. And then we were talking about the other day. It's like, whatever happened to salt and pepper? And apparently they're still touring. People still go see them. Like they're do, still doing, um, but they, uh, they push it and stuff. They fired Spinderella though. Yeah, and they, and she, they, they never there was like a docu- there was a documentary and they didn't even put her in it. Yeah. And so she was like, screw that. It's like I'm I'm not even part of this anymore. So she got I think she got her feelings hurt or something. She's like, I'm not doing it. Well they they like they just they just called her like yeah, you're like they were going on tour and they're like, um, we're you know, the tour or whatever and like you will not be like on going on tour with us and, and that was it. She was like, Okay, bye. Dang. <sighs> That's messed up, man. I wonder why. I, yeah, they, to my knowledge, they've never said, but then I never really looked that much into it because, I mean, I was like, okay. I mean, I, I saw them in concert back in the day. Um, I, I'm, that, that's all I'm going to say. Uh, no, okay, I'll say this. Oh, God, this is show my show my age. But I, you don't know how old I was, so I could have been like five. Um, but um, I saw them in concert with uh, um, Heavy D and Rock Bass and, e, and uh, Easy Rock. Nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, uh, the Pebbles was supposed to be there. She did that song Mercedes Boys back in the eighties. Uh-huh. She was supposed to be there, but she didn't um, like she didn't show, and they replaced her with somebody else. But yeah, it was Rob Bass, Salt and Pepper, and then Heavy D. Um, yeah, so Heavy D and the boys. I was the uh, girls. The girls they love me. He's the overweight lover. Heavy D. Uh, no, uh, yeah, so that's um, that that's just a little little telling of my age there. Um, I looked up the soundtrack to City of Angels, the Crow thing, mm-hmm. because I because it was actually pretty good. It doesn't get a good high rating here, but I liked the I liked it. Like they had the movie or soundtrack, the the soundtrack. Yeah. I didn't like the movie. I don't think I even saw the movie to be honest. Movie's, with you. movie's horrible. Um, like it had a, it had a, a, a Trini, the Yellow Ranger in it. Okay. It's like a whole the gold dust woman. Mm-hmm. I'm your boogeyman, white zombie. Yep. That that that's a good song. Filter, Jurassicall. That's a good song, man. Jurassicall is good. I don't understand why they. This is not. A, hey, old man, got something for you. Come naked, on, naked cousin, PJ Harvey. Oh, PJ that, Harvey. That, that, that's a great song. Um, in a lonely place, bush. Tonight is a special night. And then the Make Seven Mary Three shelf, shelf Life. That's a good song. I, I like Shelf I, Life. I don't know if I know Shelf Life. If, like it's, it's on here, and then like Linda Perry ter- toadies are on there. Corn, Deftones, Iggy Pop. What is the what is the the uh okay, we're getting way off to the podcast. What is the the Deftones song? Um Deftones, Deftones, Teething. Okay. I mean all of the all the songs on there were fairly decent, man, so whatever. Adidas was my no it's either Adidas or Got the Life was my first corn song. I think it was probably Got the Life. I think I had heard Adidas but I didn't know it was corn. And then Got the Life was like the first song I, I, I knew by them. And I was like, oh, okay. I remember the first time I heard Korn was like, boom, are you ready? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> I, I always tell Micah about that one Korn song um, where like it's like they're recording before like they, they start playing. And the they guy's like, hey, we're going to do this thing. And they're like, okay, well, how's that go again? And it's like. It's like you want to. Um, it's like he's like, and eh, eh, eh. it's like okay, yeah, let's go start. And then he's like, uh, and then he's, like, he's like, just do it, damn it. And then, and then the guy gets ready to play. He's like, hey, you, you guys want to like, you want to play this one? And he's just playing this guy. And then the guy goes, he gets mad. He's like, fuck you, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard that? Oh. It's it's funny as hell. <laughs> I'll even play it for you. And and then they actually start the, the song, but it's uh, I think it's I think it's clown is this song, but it's it's funny as crap. I remember um, I thought it was so cool because 
that was it the follow the leader um cover was done by Capullo. Uh is it Capullo? Okay. Yeah, yeah, Greg Capullo cuz like, you know, cuz he was spawn I think they were spawn fans Well, and, like, I was going to yeah. say I, w- I was wondering if it was if it was McFarlane or Capullo cuz I think McFarlane did one of their covers. I think he was hired through McFarlane, you know, what I'm saying cuz like, you know, they're buddies. Well, and... McFarlane did the the music video for the one cuz you know, it was, like, I think it was the, the follow the leader cuz like they the, the bullet like going through and and like yeah, the, going through all the scenes. Yeah. <clears throat> now, I mean, if we're talking about that, the the Pearl Jam music video. Oh yeah. <sighs> God, I love that. But anyway, anyway, so back to uh, you had you had one more. You had um, well, 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 yeah, I was going to, but I want to change my answer now because I was going to do Martian Manhunter and Korean War, but since you said Blue Devil, and I, I talked myself out of it, but what? I'm just going to do it, man. Etrigan in the Crusades, man. I think that'd be pretty fun, man. I don't know how that works, but I think you could make it work somehow because you mm. have all these guys going after, you know, have all these people. That you have both sides that are against devils, right? Right. So it'd be kind of fun to put Etrigan right in the middle of that and him talking in rhyme and stuff and messing with people's heads. Like that'd be awesome, man. That would be awesome. That'd be fun. So it's like I just to, just for the fact of that, just so because it would be fun. I don't know how it works, but Etrigan and the Crusades just makes me laugh. I mean, that'd be awesome. Like <laughs> he 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 could mess with both sides and they wouldn't know what to do. Well, it'd be funny if if Jason Blood was fighting for one side. But Etrigan was on the other side. Yeah, because well, yeah. like they'd be conflict together, and that—that's the thing. It's like that—that's they literally said you could save your soul by going over there to slaughter the 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 dark forces over there because they were the, they were the devils. But like that's so opposite of what it was supposed to be about. It, the whole thing was just a nightmare on both sides, and so much slaughter has been over that one territory for so long. But it still is. It's still it's still the biggest thing in the world. Conflict is the three big religions. They all fight over this one little piece of land and you know <coughs> one of my uh the one of my early screenplays um which i still like but it, it'd have to be kind of like rewritten but uh the it's about vampires but there's a uh this guy that kind of runs this local house of like uh like vampiric house or whatever and he's like this is our group and he's like we can you know trace the lineage our vampire you know, back to this and um and it's given a, a brief history lesson. He tells the guy that the uh, the Crusades, uh, I think it was like, like the the second or third Crusade or whatever it was, you know, where they were um, going after uh, like Muslims. Yeah, it was like that had nothing to do with religion. No, yeah, like the uh, like they were they wanted they were, the land, but no. In in my story, oh. they were like the um, they were actually hunting vampires, oh. and the vampires had taken refuge. In their land, because they, because you know, not all vampires were, you know, like the Nosferatu kind of things, and they had taken refuge in their land. So the only way they could go after them without telling the whole world they they were going hunting vampires was they launched a, you know, a war against Muslims. But they really were going over there to kill the vampires. Yeah. So that was like the whole thing. It was like we're, we're saying it's one thing, but just to get us over there. So it's because we, we can't tell people, yeah, oh yeah. I, he's very, very quiet. I'm hunting vampires. Well, you know? well, Pain. I've got a character called Pain, and he's a Scottish werewolf. And like, he uh, did you write a comic book about him? I did. Did you draw a comic book about him? Yes. Isn't that for sale right now? Comicsology. Yes. Okay. And like, but one of one of his best things about him, I love, is his origins. And like, he goes over the Crusades, and that's how he meets um this character that pretty much he can't control his werewolf form at first mm-hmm. because he slaughters his family, so he's got all he's guilt ridden. So he tries to kill himself three times. Well, third time he runs into a priest and he says, look, you want to be forgiven for your sins. He doesn't know he's a werewolf. If you want to be forgiven for your sins, go to the crusades. You, you'll be forgiven of everything right. if you become a warrior. And so when he's over there, he meets somebody who basically finds a way to where he can actually become a white wolf. Because originally he's just all red wolf. Mm-hmm. But like he, when, he, when he meets this character, he becomes a white wolf. And he's, white wolves are protectors. So it has to do with the crusades. So I've always been a big fan of that. Like, uh, the whole thing, but now we're talking about it, man, and I can't do it now. But well, yeah, I'm just gonna say it. Talking about you know Dracula and stuff. Dracula was a like a Christian order. Like I mean, because it was Dracul. Dracul was um, his dad, and he was um, the dragon. And Dracula means son of the dragon. And they were part of the the order of the dragon, and that was a high Christian society. He was the only thing that he was keeping the Muslim forces at bay. All that tortured stuff where he puts them on the pikes and stuff. You're talking about Vlad Tepes? Huh? Vlad, yeah, Vlad the Impaler. Yeah. Yeah, Dracula. He, and like, that's where he put them all. 
like up on the spikes and stuff to keep them at bay. But you know, I was thinking about it. Man, that would be kind of cool. Blade, Blade or Mobius. Oh, back then? Yeah, that would be kind of cool, man, if you put them in there. It's like... Man, <laughs> Vlad Tepes, uh, please have some drink with me. Do you have any plasma? <laughs> well, well, the, 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 that, that's, well, that's one of the things they say. They say that like when you go to eat with them, he'd have bodies. He said that there was this guy that came in there like when they talked to him, like he'd have bodies hanging down, and like he'd actually literally drip, dip his um, bread and blood and eat it in front of you. And like if you were insulted or acting anything, he he put you on a spike out there too. He was really really ruthless, but he had to be. Because the thing is, it was kind of like, um, it's kind of like we, uh, uh, Dark Side mm-hmm. and, and um, the High Father, they traded sons. They did that there too because Dracula was raised by the, the Mongols. That's why he knew what he needed to do to scare the shit out of them. Because mm-hmm. he was raised by him and then the other guy, yeah, they traded, they did that whole thing. But I was going to say, like, uh, I do remember he, they said that, you know, he would sit out like his balcony, eat breakfast, you know, while, while watching the people like that have been impaled and stuff. But um, the... Bram Stoker's Dracula, the one that was done by Francis Ford Coppola. Yeah, um, that's a good movie. The Topps comic, uh, Topps did a like a three part adaptation. Mignola did it right, right? Mignola, and I actually, I still, it doesn't fit me anymore. But I had a T shirt I bought of that, and it's a black T shirt except for this band that goes around the middle. That is, uh, it's uh, like uh, orange and red, and it just has a silhouette of the people impaled. On oh, it that's it. awesome! Man. And it's Mignola, it is beautiful, man. I, I love that shirt. Um, and that's straight from the Topps comic book. Uh, so yeah, it's kind of cool. Um, but anyway, so yeah, that's kind of, I, I wanted to, I wanted to do something, I was something similar to that. Cause I was thinking about putting like blue devil during the Salem witchcraft trials, but it's not a war. I thought about know? Etrigan in the witch trials too, but it's not a war either. I thought the same <laughs> thing. Man, Cause I wanted, it's funny that we both went to Etrigan or blue devil. I, I would have never thought of blue devil. That's pretty cool. I like it. That, that guy out of place that fits though, you know, like that would freak the hell out of people, especially yeah. in that time period. You know, it'd be, is it easier to freak people out now, or is it harder? Because everybody's so uh, we're so technology, yeah, technologies, or or like you're worried about like it's a trick because you got the video stuff. Like you, people would just instantly dismiss stuff. Whereas like back then, you could, I mean, and even you, in the eighties, you, you could scare the shit out of people. You, you got know? like it's, prank shows and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I don't know. There's a um, I, uh, like a month or so ago, I ended up watching like a bunch of I say bunch. I think I watched like four or five documentaries with, like during like a like a week or two week that time period. Um, I watched Osploitation, which is on Prime, which is all about the uh, the uh, Australian movie like movement that came over from the seventies when you know you start getting all these Australian movies, including like Mad Max and stuff. Really, really good. Um, I watched a couple of those in, but I watched one about uh, Larry Cohen, the director Larry Cohen. Um, and <clears throat> what was really interesting about this was um, it talked about his kind of like Gonzo like filmmaking style, uh-huh. and it go- goes to what you were just saying. Is like when he made like a uh, Black Caesar, uh, like in the one part, Fred Williamson's character is walking across the street, and um, a guy they're filming in New York. So he's walking across the crosswalk, and the guy's like coming from the other way and shoots him, and he gets shot. Well, he would he would like film stuff, um, but he wouldn't get like a film permit. So when he shot that that scene, and they were they had the cameras like in different places, like high up, so. Nobody knew that they were filming a scene. Somebody thought it was for real. Right. And the, but the people don't ha- like a couple people try to help him. Most of them just like look and some people just keep on going. So <laughs> this guy gets shot right in the middle of the street and some people look, some people try to help and everything, but just keep on going. They just keep on going. And yeah, how we like film a lot of his stuff is like he wouldn't get a permit. And one point, like when he, Fred Williamson, like gets in a cab and he's, he's like, just drive, drive. These people are trying to kill me. And the car drives up on the sidewalk. Again, there's no permit. The people are on the side where they're moving out of the way. They're just ordinary people that don't know that there's this car just like suddenly coming after them. And that, that he would just shoot that way. Like um, he shot the, the movie Q, The Winged Serpent, about the Quetzalcoatl, like a uh, like dragon and stuff like that. That was in, um, wasn't the Empire State Building. It was, uh, uh, I figure with that, with the, it might have been the Empire State Building. But anyway, so. Um, so the, the 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 dragon is there, the winged serpent is there, and they're sh- and they're shooting at it, um, trying to kill it. Well, again, he didn't have a permit, so they're shooting, and shells are raining down 
onto the street below and there's all this gunfire and they end up calling the police because they were like what What's the hell going is going on? on right and of course he'll film this movie and not getting permission and and like he would do like a bunch of his stuff that way and like things that you can't do nowadays well, what, like what, you wouldn't be able to it wouldn't it, like the french connection the the um oh, the car the chase car chase that wasn't licensed either no. they just did that out of, and people were like ah <laughs> it's, I mean, like, it's dangerous I yeah mean. so but it was like you know he would just he would just film it and just go and but he was like new york he's like new yorkers just adapt it's like you know if you drive a car on the sidewalk new yorkers will move out of the way you know like and they would just well that's the thing it's like they're they big cities like that like they'll step over your dead body man they're not going to get involved i mean some people might but for the most part people just go okay not involve me i'll see you later don't look and don't get involved yeah so so you were saying like you know uh that that whole thing of like you know yeah like well it, like um it, 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 it here's blue people, devil right, right, <laughs> and it's just people like oh, okay well yeah. yeah yeah but the other part of that is when you take a you do something like that and you take a man or a person out of time and then they don't know what's going on. So they're asking questions because they're confused. And you're like, what the heck are you doing here? And you're confused. Um, yeah. So it's, it's fun. It's, uh, it's fun to mess with. I, I, we didn't bring, we didn't use any, any, um, didn't use, but we didn't, um, like do any female characters. Um, A siren. Oh yeah. You did do siren. So I guess I didn't do any female <laughs> yeah. characters. Um, and you know, it's, I, whenever we do something like that, you know, it, it always seems like, like, how come is everything so male centric? Um, and it's not because we don't like female characters, but one is, you know, even when you look at like comic books nowadays, like how many how many females are in the Justice League? Like Wonder one. Woman. And and now Vix, got, well, Vixen. And Jessica Cruz. Is, is Vixen actually Gyp, Gypsy. No, well, I mean, like, just, I mean like, like on like the team right now. Oh like, now, no, team. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you got like two, you got Jessica Cruz and you got like Wonder Woman, you know? Like, you know, you look at like Avengers, like who's on the team right now? Like Ms. Marvel. Like like so when you look well, at She Hulk. Is she on the team? Yeah, right okay. now. So, so when you look at it, like, it's not that, that there aren't any, but the ratio is so small that when I look at like Avengers as a whole from like, you know, from like the team from the seventies to now, like you've, you've got like maybe like five women. Um, but then you've got some people that have always been like wasp. She's always been there or comes and goes. And you may have like Joe Casta or somebody like that. But then like Ms. Marvel, then like, then who else do you have? Like sometimes spider woman, you know, like it's so so like when i'm looking at that like out of 100 people around my head like there's like maybe 10 of them are women so of course like i got 90 guys are just sort of like sit right there so anyway just say all that um it well, would be and you know like you're growing up too it's like it, it's a male dominated dominated fantasy we're more to to go with characters that we relate to like not that you don't can't relate to she hulk but if you like women for being women you still see see them as not objects per se, but like you see them as they're not anybody to be saved because they technically can save you, but like more as like a I don't know, kind of like watching some girl that you think is kind of cute on TV. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, it, it's harder for me to put myself in a woman's shoes. Like I think not that only women can write women and only men can might write men, but like, uh, but but like I said, like I use Siren, you know, just because it came up in my head. Why do these things hit your head? You got to go with your gut instincts. It's not because you are just thinking only one way. It's like a, I mean, like you know, I came up with Blade after the fact, but he's African American. Like you know, you don't have to be African American to write African American, but it's like he just fit in that storyline. You know, it's like just stuff pops in your head. This works here for well. Oh, I, I did. I used uh, I did. I got two dagger. Oh yeah, yeah, you got yeah. Dagger. So I got two two girls. Yeah, but but to be but you to be didn't fair, do anything. So it's but to be much, fair though, it's like, more Jack eighty one eighty two. That's oh, and I used the black guy too. Uh, like Cloak. dagger, dagger was a carryover from Cloak. So like she just like Cloak stepped in the door. She just had to be there too. But like, oh, don't forget me. So, <laughs> so <laughs> no, you, no, you can't you can't include her because uh, the series is called Cloak and Dagger, not, yeah. not Dagger and Cloak. It's Cloak and Dagger. But there'd be no Dagger without Cloak. You you know you behind oh. every great man is a great woman. Yeah, like no, that, they don't like that one. I was, gonna say, no, no, I was gonna say, don't, don't give me that. There is no light without darkness. Garbage. You know, like, no. Um, you know the only thing that it takes to destroy the darkness is one beam of light. Oh. <laughs> See, this is why you got fired from Hallmark. <laughs> so, I was, so I was thinking like, so yay for me. I had I had minorities, men, and women. You know, they, they don't I like, did much better than you. Like I'm glad called, you pointed this out. They don't like being called minorities anymore. <laughs> Huh? They don't like being called minorities anymore. Well, everybody's a minority sometime. Depending on what room you're in. 
No, I mean... <laughs> maybe. Um, I, was, I was trying to think, like, of uh, another, like, I don't know, like, war or conflict, um, one that, that you don't typically see, uh, or maybe, like, hear about, and... Um, I was, I was, I was thinking about like, uh, sorry, I mean, no, go ahead. No, I was, to be honest, I was thinking about like, I, I told you like obscure wars, like, you know, um, little bighorn, you know, it's like, or it was like Custer's last stand where like they, uh, they took him out, like maybe throwing in, um, um, Warpath or, uh, Thunderbird or maybe, um, oh, what's the other guy's name? Scalp Hunter. Who's his guy's the where's the American Eagle? Chief Wahoo? Yeah, yeah. He'd be kinda cool. Uh, oh so so uh, again off topic here, but um uh my mom uh knew uh one of the guys that actually found like where Custer's last stand actually took place. Like it this was back I think he found it back in um the early nineties, like him and a bunch of other people they've been looking at because they knew it's like they took place in like this area but not exactly where it was and they found the exact location where the battle took place um and uh supposedly they said that like at night because there's there's hills and stuff in these valleys that at night like you could hear these sounds that sounded like you know like a uh, like a war cries and oh, really? stuff like that like, like, like stuff. Yeah. wow um but anyway, um, so I was trying to think of like another because uh, something like a, uh, I kind of did like a, uh, well, I guess I didn't really do like uh, that's all about Wolverine being in the, um, you know, being like ancient Greece or whatever, and then doing all this stuff. But um, uh, what's the um, crap? What's I, I feel really stupid now. Um, You know, I was I was trying to think of one that uh, that one of the older ones, not something newer, because it would be way I think not way too easy, but it'd be too easy. But one of the big things, like um, like uh, um, uh, like Alexander, you know, he's, oh, like, pushing his, great. Yeah. yeah, pushing his way across. Like, what if like Storm was one of those? Like, was remember like like it's he we, he comes in and takes over a city. She happens to be in that city, and then stands you know, in his way. But no, as they say, and she joins his joins him. For, his forces, and so like now like. That's one of his weapons. There is like you know, I got this 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 powerhouse of you know of nature, and uh, that that would be kind of cool. He pretty much conquered every like all the known world. Like he had it all, mm-hmm. and he was only in his twenties. It's crazy. Yeah, we we talked uh, about him in our uh, in the final episode of the uh, uh, Watchmen, just because of the whole thing with Ozzy Ozzy Mandius. Mandius. Yeah, and uh, it was interesting, kind of this. The, the the whole thing with Osmandius and then um uh like you know Alexander of Macedonia and and you know his whole like conquering and and all that stuff and why he stopped and you know he said just you know dying at such a young age um because but possibly what, possibly murdered I'm not sure uh, but I was gonna say like one of the things we talked about uh, which I don't want to get into because we talked about it on that but how he, there's he did he did this big great thing but he didn't set like it was all on him. He was the only person that was, that was carrying it through. So when he died, yeah, there was no one else to, to continue take on. So it all just fell apart. So like you did something great, but you didn't think it through, but, but to, but to what end? Because once you died, it like, it didn't, it, it was almost like it didn't even exist anymore. Well, like, that's, 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 that's almost like all empires that crumble over time. It's like, what, it, that, that's what I'm saying. It's fleeting hmm. you, in, in the grand scheme of things. It'll all, they'll all fall to dust eventually. Yeah, dust in the wind. That's all we are, my friend. <laughs> Two lost souls swimming in a fishbowl. I did like your idea though of uh of like Martian Manhunter in like the Korean War. Korea. Because because when you said that, what and not take over your story, but what I thought because you said like have him there and then with his shape changing ability and stuff that he would just be kind of like he would be there and trying to learn more about like our you know, culture, the cult, right? Yeah. And and you know watching the the conflict and then you know, like okay, so I'm gonna right now I'm a, I'm a Korean soldier. And then I'll slip away and just become like an American soldier. See what it's and, like from both sides, right? And then like, and I'll just be like a just a a Korean civilian or do this. And then and then like, my take on it was that like after like like kind of watching both sides, he's like, 
I'm not taking any part of this. It all like it's like this is I'm looking at this and it's just wrong on both sides, and right? It, and, then, and, and, then, and then he's like he's like they're no different than, than what I came from, you know. It's like what I and then like he could maybe be in a situation where fire gets involved and like that could mess with him. Like that's why he's got the psycho. Yeah, it's like there's lots of stuff to do there. Mm. I see, and then talking about natural tendencies, I, I noticed that all my stuff was Marvel, so I I, re, I, I forced myself to come up Martian Man or Etrigan or you know it's like uh, I, I tend to go towards Marvel a lot. Yeah. Well, I mean, we've talked about that, too. It's like there's nothing wrong with DC, but, yeah, we definitely tend to go towards Marvel a lot. And at one point, I thought about putting Batman mm-hmm. in something, you know, just the the world's greatest detective being in a situation like that. Uh, and, like, what would he do and his tactical skills and all that kind of stuff. But I was like, yeah, I'm like, but the, he would just be another tactician, a strategist in a situation. Like, I don't know if it would add anything to it. He'd be know? he'd be like. In charge of the false flag events to start all the shit. <laughs> it's like let's make up this so people will believe this. I was thinking like like, like okay, it's like I, I've got this idea and like all right, so because <laughs> because Batman, like, I, I'll just say this: Batman is great because he's Bruce Wayne. But if Batman was like I don't know like Joe Nobody that didn't have money, he couldn't be Batman. Well. I haven't read it, but there's this future state that's going on right now, and supposedly that's what it is. It's like broke Batman. <laughs> he's like he's like dark detective, and I haven't read any of it, but supposedely it's, some of it's okay. Where like he he he's like got a computer, but he's amped it up somehow, you know. Yeah. But it's all like bare budget, like you know, it's like Peter Parker level, like Batman. <laughs> it's like uh... <coughs> well, I'm just saying, like like you, know, he he wouldn't have like all the gadgets and, and like the, the the car and stuff like that is fine, but you he would not have like the you know the, the rebreathers. He wouldn't have like the the uh, like the this the the grappling hook and all. I mean, like he he would just he would just be like a thug, just piecing stuff together with what he could. Kind of like a like uh, Spider Man from like Homecoming. You know, it was like it was like oh yeah, I found this this like you know, DVD player in the trash can. So you know, <laughs> I mean that would be him like putting stuff together. So but he wouldn't be Batman. So you like you like put him in a situation like that. Like he can craft some stuff up, but he's not gonna be Batman because. He's missing like most of the tech that makes him Batman. And granted, he you know, comes up with these ideas and makes the stuff on his own, but he also has the resources. You take away the resources, though, you just have a guy with a bunch of really good ideas. <laughs> you, picture, you picture a guy like he he, he ties like a band. He's all broke. He has to tie a bandana around his head. He's like, he's like, what the hell? You supposed to? I'm Batman. He's like, where are your ears? And then he just tapes them all. Later. He's like, because <laughs> he can't afford a cow. <laughs> He's like, they're coming in next week. <laughs> yeah, it's like I'm working on it. It's like it's like you're shitty. Your outfit's shitty. You need a better outfit. It's like no, I'll get one, depending on how much money I get off of you tonight. <laughs> he, he, he takes one of those like little things that you see on kids where they they have like the the thing that goes over their head. Oh yeah. That, like clumps to your head, and they got like the thing, and then he just sticks it underneath his cow, and, like points mm-hmm. little points, <laughs> like cardboard points. <laughs> I'm pro Batman. <laughs> yeah, I mean, being a vigilante is expensive. I mean, it really is. And then, like, I what? thought I was one that broke you, but it was the Federal Reserve. <laughs> <laughs> I had a um, as the story I was writing um, once, uh, and I just I couldn't figure out like how to like where to take it because it, it really did have like a uh, like a really sad ending. But this it was this guy was a hero, and he had um. He gone to college, like his like uncle or grandfather somebody that died and left him a house and left him a bunch of money. And then he, you know, became a vigilante superhero and he fought. And but then like he started missing time at work because, you know, like, you know, his he, leg got broken in this one thing, or, you know, and so like he was out of work for this thing, he was out of work for that thing, or and you know, he's always hurt. And they, you know, they're asking a lot of questions and stuff. And then he got swept away in like a secret wars type of thing so he was gone for like two weeks with no explanation of where he was so he ended up losing his house and of course you know all this you know he's losing you know he, the money he has saved up you know he's spending a lot of that like fighting his like you know his uh, campaign against you know like uh i don't want to say evil but you know the gangs or whatever it is he's fighting and like one day he passes like a guy on the street and uh the guy's home he's homeless and uh, he recognizes him as being like one of the speedsters he's, he's like fought beside. And the guy sitting there, he's got like a sign that says, um, like a like a veteran of unknown wars, you know, because he's fought all these battles that you've never heard of. And he's broke. And he doesn't have anything. Um, 
And so in the end, like the guy, like he, he, he's got nothing, like he doesn't have a job and his money's all run out and uh, he goes home and he has a, he has a beer and he's sitting there and he's drinking a beer and he's like, you know, I haven't had a beer in like 15 years because, Mm -hmm. you know, you can't be, you can't, you know, go home and like drink and be a superhero. Yeah. And, and then he, he blows his head off. Oh. Because he's, he's got nothing. It's like they, they, that's that's the life of a of a vigilante, you know, superhero. It's like I'm doing all this stuff, but like it's a, it's a campaign I'm fighting by myself. But you don't know. And they said in the real world, I just can't get whisked off the Secret Wars and come back and still have a job, you know. And like, who's paying all these medical bills? And people are gonna start asking questions like, where'd you get that black eye? You know, yeah. like how'd you get your leg broken? What are you doing? You know, um, and and stuff like that could even get you fired. Where they're like, you know you're doing some dangerous stuff that could possibly endanger the company or its reputation. You know, you know what you do with that case. If they call you in, they try to fire you. You start, stop hitting me. What are you doing that for? What? I didn't know why. <laughs> stop. For some reason, I thought of my first fight with Bane. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah. And so like, he's, he's like, you know, this, this thing ran its, its course, but, and I thought I was doing the right thing, but in the end, it's like it cost me everything. And the thing is, nobody will ever know what he's done. Yeah. So it was all for nothing. But so I, but I had nowhere to take that story. So I mean, that's it. You can't, you can't um, change the world. No. Unfortunately, that's what. I mean, you think it out, you really can't. I think all those guys that actually, like the real live hero guys, you know, that actually go out and do that stuff, they they give up eventually because yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't work. Um, I mean, you, I mean, I, I mean, maybe you can if you tried. No, no, not at all. I mean, you can maybe save one person, but you you could lose people too, and then you really have to live with that. Well, that's what Batman says. It's like just you know, just save one person, and then you'll know. Yeah, that's what he said. Well, so there you go. I've never been in a situation where I can do it. So, but maybe, maybe that may that may not have been uh, that may not have been Batman. That that may have been Josh. Josh might have said that. I guess we'll find out in a couple months. Josh, who? I don't know what you're talking about. Justice League movie, when Batman tells Flash, he's like, I've never, like, you know, fought anybody. I just pushed a couple people. And he's like, go in there. He's like, just save one person. He's like, save one person, and then you'll know. Who's Josh? Who came in and took over Justice League in the movie? Josh? We talked about this last night, right? Remember? I don't know. I don't, I don't remember Josh, man. Josh. Oh, jo- oh Josh. Josh. Sweden. Yeah. Oh, I was like, but he wasn't part of the movie, man. He was. He was like the director and stuff. Right, but he rewrote a bunch of scenes and stuff like that. So I was saying, like, we don't Josh, know Josh Sweden. Yeah. So we don't know if that was if that was actually <clears throat> Flash the, or the Bruce Wayne actually said that, or if that was Josh. Josh. Josh uh, might have said I got, that. I gotcha. I gotcha. So anyway, uh, so there we are. Superheroes in wars. Um, you know that uh, they probably shouldn't be in. Um. But uh, in doing, you know, uh, superhero things, I really wanted to put the Hulk in something um, because, like, let's say if you put the Hulk in, like, World War One, and, you know, he, like, hulks out and, and that kind of stuff. And I thought that would be kind of, kind of interesting. Um, but then the other part of that is, like, eventually, like, the, the bad guys or whoever would, would catch on. And then, of course, they would, you know, kidnap him or whatever it'd be like how how can we get what you have i, I was gonna say like you could put um um the abomination and stalin but they were on our side so <laughs> it wouldn't work but i was gonna say well that's something that yeah, could be like the origin of the abominations like that he's doing all that stuff and then um and then they capture him and i'm sorry that was just weird but anyway they, they they capture him and uh and then as they're trying to figure out like what makes you this thing, you know, this unstoppable brute that we can now have on our side. And in the process of it, they make a, a, like, uh, that looted version, which is like the abomination or something. So. Well, and it does tie into nuclear experimentation too. Cause like, you know, they use the nuke and mm-hmm. yeah. So yeah, it's time period matches up. Yep. <clears throat> so, yeah. So anyway, it's just something different, you know, figure we check and try it out and just see, you know, just, you know, I don't know. Just try it out. We were just joshing around. Yeah, we were just yeah, joshing we around. Yeah. yeah. Nah. I say whenever, 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 whenever I do something wrong, that's gonna be my thing. I was, I was just joshing. That's just joshing. That's just joshing. <laughs> hey, 
Hey, which one of you guys pinched me on my ass? <laughs> it's not just Josh. We, we we do know it's Josh Whedon, but we call him Josh Sweden. So we we're just playing with the name. If you've never heard that before, so. yeah, well, we talked about it on the one thing because you know we we're talking about just what a piece of shit he is, and uh, and that's why I was like, you know, your name's not Joss. We know that you did that. <laughs> Joss Stone. Her name is Joss. You know, <laughs> like you, you just want to sound different in Hollywood. Just like my name is is Ving Rames, not Irving Rames. You know, and it's like it's Ving Rames, and you know. And I'm like Vin Diesel, not Vincent Diesel, like Smith, you know, whatever his name is. <laughs> uh, Vincent uh, was his like Vincent Diesel Stein or something. I don't know, but you know, <laughs> Diesel Stein. But, but but no, I go by Vin Diesel, you know. <laughs> so and he's like, he goes like, uh, I go by. My name is Josh. Yes, Josh. No, it's like no, it's Josh. Asshole, it's Josh. We all know that. <laughs> you know, he so. is an asshole. That's unfortunate. Yeah. I liked a lot of his work at one point. You know, was, though, you know that if you, if you, he's got that big ass forehead. If you paint him green, he would make a really good leader without any additional makeup. He, he, he almost looks like the leprechaun. I'm the oh, leprechaun. Yes. <laughs> I'm the leprechaun. Stop it, Wayne. You're scaring me. <laughs> like, gonna call, who are you going to call? <laughs> I'm the leprechaun. <laughs> oh, you creeping me out. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> calm, calm down, calm down, wall crawler, calm down. Pixie dust, pixie dust. I'm the leprechaun. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, everyone. Thank you all for joining us here. Another episode of In the Gutters. My name is Turk182. Wall crawler one. And uh, yep, yeah, this was a lot of fun. And uh, of course, we end up kind of, you know giving you like a brief history lesson in some regards, and then we just ran our mouth off in others. But still, hell, that's what we try to make it entertaining in some. Um, okay, I'm sorry. I just gotta say this. Like that woman's like the, the, her that fat the most, neck. Like did you see her name? Yeah, it looks so fake. But like, like her neck, she's got those fat rings around her. Like she looked like one of those African women that have like the rings. Yeah, there, like, and then they removed them. Yeah, like like her. Her name is an Andromeda DeBerry. That's the most made up name is, I've ever heard in my freaking life, man. That's even worse than Josh Sweden. <laughs> Andromeda. <laughs> you know, ain't no damn Andromeda. Uh, Anyway. So it sounds like a the canceled Star Trek show that they didn't make. <laughs> Star Trek Andromeda. <laughs> Gene Roddenberry's Rod, Andromeda DeBerry. <laughs> maybe, maybe, that's, maybe that's who she is. She's like she's like she like, was the captain and she had the neck thing going. And they after time like she we we filmed for two years but they never aired any of the episodes and just stretch her neck out beyond repair. I was thinking that she was like the illegitimate daughter of Gene Roddenberry and Robert <laughs> DeBerry. And she, and she, and she has like, <laughs> and she has, and has the yellow Sulu <laughs> shirt on. Hello. <laughs> yes. And that fake ass J.K. Simmons is sitting alongside of her. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh. Okay, I started I'm... several episodes of Andromeda. <laughs> DeBerry was a very good captain, but she was a little uh, out there. Well, you know, they actually did have, like, Gene Ray, John Barry's Andromeda with uh, yeah, yeah. Sorbo. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but there was no Andromeda to Barry. <laughs> it wasn't. <laughs> I banged my arm against the table, now i got a Sorbo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, sorry about that last little bit there, but that, I, I just saw that. I'm like, what the hell? Um so, yeah, uh, thank you all again for joining us for In the Gutters, and uh, we will be back um, doing something else comic book related. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, uh, hope you enjoy this episode, and stay tuned for more comic book related stuff. Hmm? Peace. Yeah, as always, live fast, love hard, doubt can mass on.